Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. This is your host, Alicia Debrell from Insight Media. Today's guest is Matthew Hill, and he helps people who are stuck and frustrated in life learn how to leave the grind behind so they can take control of their lives and live with more passion and excitement. Matthew is an award-winning salesman with over 20 years of experience. He uses the same skills and practices for building great sales teams to teach others how to use their mindset for creating a great life. Now a certified success and transformational coach, Matthew teaches simple and practical strategies to help others take control of their lives so that they can see the results that they truly want. Matthew uses a fun and hands-on experience to illustrate the superpower lying inside all of us. So without further ado, totally excited, I want to welcome Matthew to the show. Hi, Matthew. Welcome to the show. Hi, Alicia. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. I'm excited. I love learning more about what people do and how they do it. So I did some research on you, and I saw that you have a background in sales. So what attracted you to be, you know, jump into the coaching arena? Well, I tell you what, Alicia. So basically, I was in sales for a long time, and I kind of started to lose the passion uh, for the day-to-day job of it because, uh, you know, sometimes when you get stuck doing the same thing over and over, it just kind of makes you feel like you're spinning in a circle. And I had always been interested in self-development books, and it just kind of got me thinking, like, what is making some people way more successful than other people? And I just kind of dove into it. And I just kind of had this yearning to learn about what made some people successful. And the more I got into it, I realized I never learned this stuff growing up. My parents, my teachers, coaches, nobody ever taught me about the mindset and how important that is to success in life. And the more I learned, I knew I wanted to teach this to other people so that they could live their best lives too. That's awesome. In my research, I did find out, I also saw that you were a stay-at-home dad, tour of duty, (laughs) which is really cool. What's going on with that? It seemed like an unfortunate time in my life because my wife and I had moved to a new city. And uh, at first, it was hard finding a sales job. And so we decided that my wife would go to work first since we moved. And I would stay at home with our uh, year-old daughter at the time. So uh, like I say, at first it felt a little frustrating because I couldn't find work at the time. And then I got to stay home with her and it, it was just a great experience to be able to be the full-time caregiver for my child. So it ended up being a really good experience for me. And you got to see so many things because at that age, they are learning and exploring and getting around. So you, that's really cool that you got to you know experience that 24-7. Well, Hopefully not 24-7, but... <laughs> <laughs> it sure felt like it. But yeah, you're right. You know, a lot of times when you're working and you're gone a lot of during the day, you don't see a lot of those little things. So I had a very fortunate experience to, to kind of have that little time off from work and then take care of my daughter like that. That's awesome. So I really like your approach to coaching because it seems very genuine and not so, I guess you want to say fluffy. How do you define your approach? What makes it different? Yeah, I I appreciate that question, Alicia. Basically, it is. It just comes from wanting to help other people have better lives. And as I said before, as I was learning all this, I would mention it to to other people in my life and nobody was learning this. Nobody was applying these types of principles to their own life. And as I started doing it, I realized how much more fulfilling life was and it was more satisfying. And I wanted to bring this to other people because I really think creating a better community, a better world and a better place for everybody has people living with passion and not not feeling like they are living that grind every day. So it really just comes from a place of generally wanting to help people live a better experience. I like it. Do you really genuinely care about how people are actually living their lives? So many people get stuck in the grind, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and as you know, if you're grinding at work or say you're grinding in a relationship or whatever it is and it's stressful, that spills over to all these other areas of life. And so, you know, if you have problems at home, you're going to have problems at work and it, and it just drags people down. And, you know, so many people I see, they're, they're all like, hey, how you doing? And they'll say, oh, I'm living the dream. 
you know, and it's this very sarcastic answer. And I'm like, that's really sad because I think people should be living their dream and living their passion. And like I said, when people are doing that, they are better people and that creates a better circle around them. And that's how I think our communities and, and the world just starts becoming a better place. And that brings me actually right to my next question, because from what I read, it looks like you work with a lot of clients that are not happy with that nine to five and, and they want to get more out of their lives. How do you go about doing that? Uh, you know, it's, it's really uh, a lot of work on mindsets and, and focusing on what you want in life. See, I think what happens is people allow life to happen to them and, and they end up they being in a good mood if something good happens, they'll have good thoughts for a while, but then things turn quickly if something bad happens because then they'll have bad thoughts and then they'll be in a bad mood. And basically they're allowing the circumstances around them to, to determine how their mood and their attitude is. That is why you have that power that you talked about earlier inside because you can actually change that just depending on what you want to focus on. So, you know, people stay in those ruts and they stay stuck and trapped. And actually what they're doing is they're just recreating the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I know that totally makes sense. Most people can identify with the feeling of basically settling and not chasing their dreams for a number of reasons. I suspect probably most of them feel trapped due to life circumstances, you know, family, or have become just comfortable to being uncomfortable. What would you say to those type of people? It's not your fault <laughs> and, and you can make a change. Basically what I've been studying and learning is when we are born, we kind of come into this world in kind of a perfect sense. You know, we, we don't have any beliefs that limit us. We don't have any fears. And we kind of learn that and not out of malice either, but our parents and our teachers and other adult role models, you know, they tell us no. And they, and they, they shut down different things because they want us to kind of conform. You know, when you're small, you know, they'll yell at you, don't touch that pot because it's hot. Or, you know, don't run by the pool, you'll slip and fall. But as a child, you're just doing your thing and all you're hearing is this no. And next thing you know, you're trying to live your life, trying to get the approval of other people around you. And like I said, even though there was no malice, what we do is we're creating a situation where people are losing touch with what they really want. So part of my coaching is getting people back in touch on being clear on what they want in life and taking time to really decide where they want to go. Because that helps give you the direction and the motivation to make all the other coaching stuff just start working out for you. Makes sense. You also mentioned that you build and coach sales teams, which kind of like sounds like herding cats. <laughs> what exactly <laughs> do you do and what types of businesses do you work with? I work with any businesses with sales teams, customer support, anybody who's working with the clients. Because as I was learning more about the self-development and coaching world, I realized there was some principles I was using in my job um, that I, you know, that I weren't wasn't necessarily using in other areas. So I think with salespeople, uh, two of the biggest factors in becoming successful is a your mindset and the attitude you bring, and the other thing is how you communicate. So I think mindset is a big thing because you can actually set up a day to hit your goals based on the mindset and the way you think. But there's also another part where you have to communicate what your product or service does to fill a need for the client. And I don't think a lot of salespeople take time in that. It's kind of like, hey, here's the brochure or here's this. And they kind of hope that does it. But it's more of a conversation. So I like to teach salespeople uh, how to communicate with uh, the prospective buyers as well. So and I know some of the foundations of your program is the concept of superpower of choice. That sounds really cool, but what's that all about? What does that mean? Sure. Well, I'm sure you've heard the uh, expression that knowledge is power. Yes. I'm sure everyone's heard that. But I think that that is a little bit limiting. It's, a, it's, it's potential power because unless you do anything with the knowledge you have, nothing's really going to change. That's why I say I'm a transformational coach because I think a lot of people get into that mode. And I know I was this way along, you know, before I made the switch where I wanted the information. I would read books, but I wouldn't really apply much. You're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Or you'd read something else. You're like, oh yeah, I can kind of see that. But instead of applying it, you just kind of feel like you know it. And that doesn't do anything. That's why choice is so important because at any minute, you can choose to do anything you want. And I think people overlook that. They say, oh, I have to do this or I have to do that. And they get in once again to these mindsets of like, oh, I'm stuck in this position because I have to go to work or I have to do this. But if they make the choice to start following their dreams, they'll, they'll be able to see a better path 
on how they can get what they actually want. So choice, I think, is absolutely powerful if you decide to be uh, present with it and make choices that are inspired to take you to where you want to go. Is there certain things that you should do daily to try to focus in that direction? Absolutely. I touched on it a little bit, but the first thing is clarity. Most people don't have a specific goal or a specific target of what they want in life. And, and that's very limiting because it's, it's kind of like a GPS system in your car. If you wanted to go on vacation, you just type in fun vacation. A GPS isn't going to know what to do with that information. It's too vague. And the same thing is true with uh, the way your mind works and the way it filters out information. We have something that's called a reticular activating system in our brain. Because, I mean, if you think about it, at any given moment, there's millions of bits of information coming in, like the weather, how your foot feels, your arm, or who's talking in the room. And it's just too much for us to, to deal with. The RAS, what it does is it filters out whatever you're focused on. It's kind of like when you go to buy a new car and you say you're buying a certain truck. And next thing you know, you're seeing that truck everywhere. You're seeing ads for that truck. You're seeing ways to buy that truck. But it's not that that stuff wasn't always there. It's just now you've become focused on it, and now those resources and things are coming into your awareness. So that's why when you're focused on clarity and you can say, hey, I want to earn $100,000 instead of I just want to make more money or I have too much debt, being very specific on it allows your brain to see what's going on around you to get you to make $100,000 a year or pay off all your debt. But if you keep them vague, like, oh, I want to be in better shape, you know, what does that mean exactly? Better shape is uh, it's not, it's not um, specific enough. So clarity is very important when you're looking to, to achieve your goals. Agreed. And is that something that you focus on daily? Yeah, absolutely. I think what you do is you, you focus on a big goal, say like $100,000 is, is say what your goal is. And then what you do is you chunk it back from there because you can't just make $100,000 if you only make $40,000 a year. So then you, what you do is you start with that as your starting block, but then you chunk it down and say, well, what can I do today? You'll get little things like maybe you need to learn more skills. Maybe you need to do something different at work, or maybe there's a side job you've always wanted to do that, that piques your interest in a hobby. I think people just kind of give up saying, oh, I have a salary of this. There's no way I can make more money. But you know, maybe you make it on the side. Maybe you have to do something different. And every day you want to focus on where you're going, and then your brain will give you the next steps. The way life works is kind of funny. We always don't know the how. You know, you're supposed to enjoy the journey of life, but you don't know the whole journey because you've never done it before. So you're never going to know what the path is until you start going. So your brain gives information to you, kind of like headlights. You only can see 200 yards in front of you at a time. But as you go, you know, the road keeps opening up. So if people keep focusing on where they're going, the next 200 yards shows themselves and then the next 200 yards. And the next thing you know, you're well on your way to where you're going. Definitely. And daily, I think it's definitely important. Um, but you mentioned something that was very interesting to me, which was we are conditioned to believe that once we're done in investing in ourselves and we're done with school, once we're done with school, we're done investing in ourselves. And, and I find that to be true. Can you elaborate on that? And just tell us how that affects us. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of where I got to in my life. I wasn't really growing towards anything. There wasn't any like specific goals with my job I was working towards, like, you know, upper management or anything like that. It was like, I just kind of stayed there. And what I realized was, is the joy of life and the passion of life is growing and, and working towards something. Because then, you know, that gives you that motivation and that, uh, that, that feeling of excitement. And that's what I was missing. So when I started getting into coaching, I started making these goals and I wanted to help people. And that's what kind of, you know, that's what keeps you going when you're working a nine to five job and you come home and you, you start reading and studying all night is, is having that focus on, on the job and, and, and where you want to go with it. So. so getting deeper into how you help your clients now, how, what types of clients is, uh, do you help and what, which ones do you think is the best fit? Uh, I think the best fit for what I am working with are those people who are stuck in jobs and they just feel like they have no passion. Because that's exactly where I was at. And I think my story would relate well to them. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has to quit their job and try to find some coaching thing or do anything like that. But it is a, uh, a deliberate idea of bringing more passion into your job. And I think it's those are the people that I really want to work with. Because I think when you, you sit in your job and you're miserable 
like we said before, that trickles over to other parts of your life. The next thing you know, you know, your marriage isn't thriving. You're just kind of going through the motions. And I don't think that's the way anybody really wants to live life. I think people want to feel that passion and they want to feel like they're working with purpose. And you can do that without having to make some major life change. You can do that by, you know, finding something in your job to become more passionate about. Um, and that's what I want to work with is getting people to seriously live their dream. And that makes them, you know, better people all around in other areas of their life as well. Okay. So, and so how do you tailor your coaching? I mean, is it different for each person and are there steps and phases to it? Can you just go into a little bit more detail on that? Sure. Absolutely. So, so for sales teams, that's actually, uh, it's uh, up to what the sales team needs and how big they are. That one's a little bit more adaptable. Uh, for, for personal coaching, though, I have developed a seven-week program. It's kind of an online series, and we actually have three other coaches that I work with. And the reason we like this is because you kind of get the perspective from four different people. Uh, a lot of times now with coaching and anything like that, it seems like it's always just one-on-one, -on -one, one person's story, one person's idea. And we thought it'd be kind of good to give a perspective from different areas of life that you can connect to. Because, you know, certain things will connect with you, Alicia. Maybe this doesn't connect with me as well. So having the other coaches there is actually, a, I think, a very big benefit for people. In the seven-week program, basically the reason we do that is we only let a little bit of information out every week so that people can work on it. Because like I said, the main thing is that we want to see some sort of transformation we want to see people have the opportunity to do something different and apply these tactics and skills to their own life so they can start seeing results. A lot of people, if you just give all the information up front, they go through it as quickly as they can. They start working on a little bit of stuff and it fades off quickly. And that's why I think if you kind of break it down and make it go a little bit slower, you actually see better results. Um, some of my coaches and mentors actually say um, a good time frame is two years or less, 18 months, to see significant changes in your life. And not that it's not possible to do it sooner, but we all have so many limiting beliefs and self-doubts and fears that we are trapped um, every day with that it takes time to kind of work through those things. So as you're working on stronger mindsets and focusing on what you want, like I say, that takes time because right now we have a certain self-talk and when something comes up, that's our go-to answer. That's our generic answer. But that's the stuff you can change. And then that's the stuff that allows your brain and your mind to bring in those resources so that you can see the difference. So it's not that anything is, say, super difficult. Um, it's just not super easy because it does take a co cognitive present moment to say, hey, I am thinking something that's limiting me right now. Um, I'm going to change it and start saying different things to kind of move on and get past these blockages. And so, and do you offer other things besides just the seven week course? Do you do, you know, the one on one? Yeah, you know, uh, I do some one on one coaching. Uh, the seven week course does have uh, one on one coaching through it. Uh, the videos are there so people can actually work a little bit more on their own time frame. Uh, and it's actually fine if it stretches out even longer because, like I said, some topics might take some people a little bit longer to get through. So there is one-on-one -on -one coaching there. There is a community of other people uh, who are being coached between myself and then the other three coaches so that they can learn from each other. So we do do that. And I also do a lot of speaking and engagements. And uh, I will be doing some workshops, half-day and full-day workshops coming up where people can have more of a hands-on experience and go through a system like that with people. Because getting, I think, out of your element a little bit and going to a, a workshop is very powerful and a very good way to learn as well. I, I totally agree because if I'm at home and like watching a video or doing a course or trying to learn something rather than being, you know, in it at an event learning something, you tend to pay more attention because there's not so many distractions, you know? Absolutely. That, that's a great point. You know, you're in, in, in psychologically, Alicia, just paying to do a workshop and go is, is a, a commitment in your mind. You know, people, I think, you know, caught up a lot of times with like spending money to do that stuff but that that is one of the most liberating feelings i've had is investing in myself and knowing that i'm growing myself because i need to become more so that i could become a coach and do something different like this yeah no i totally agree investing in yourself is is a huge huge priority i think it should be for anybody and so we 
we know that there's a, you know, many different coaches out there and a ton of different coaching styles. And, you know, it's hard and challenging for many people trying to find the right coach for them. So what do you think the best approach to making sure a coach is right for them or that you're the right coach for them? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because I went through that too um, when I was starting to learn all this stuff. And really, I think what it basically boils down to, Alicia, is you find somebody that you can connect to their message and you connect to what they're saying. Because in the self-development world, a lot of the stuff that everyone teaches is the same. You know, you've got to have a positive outlook. You've got to know what you want. You've got to go do something about it. You know, things don't just fall in your lap. Um, but I think people's personal stories, the way they've overcome their obstacles in life that you will be able to connect with with someone on that level and, and like i said the more i've learned about this and you, you kind of get back in tune with your intuition you know everyone always says mothers have intuition well everybody has that feeling and sometimes you just get that gut feeling of like oh i like what that guy's saying or she she really nailed it for me so yes I, i've actually told some people that i'm not a, probably the best coach for them because they might want to go a different direction that i don't have as much experience in so when you're looking for a coach, you just really want to get someone who's saying a message that you can relate to and see that they have a program that's going to take you uh, where you want to go. And so do you do like a consultation with people before they sign up with you or how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. And we did that deliberately is that you can't just go to a website and sign up for our coaching program. I mean, everyone wants to make money, but that's not the point of this. We, we want people to be able to go through this and be able to really make some life changes and start living a happier, more joyful life. So every time I sign up a client, we have a free consultation, talk about where they're at, talk about where they want to go and anything that might be holding them back. And then I tell them a little bit more about the program and how it works and see if it's a good fit. Because um, like I said, if it's not a good fit, I don't want to waste anybody's time or money. And I also don't want to waste my time doing that as well. No, I, and I agree. How long are your consultations? Um, they usually last anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Okay. Because like I said, I like to talk to people and really kind of get into the issues, you know. So sometimes I tell you what, the, the consultation is just as effective for a lot of people to really bring up what they're trying to get over. Because I, I told you it's important to be specific where you want to go, but some people aren't even specific of what's wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just have this feeling of like, I want more in life or I want it to be better, but they can't define it either way. So sometimes the consultation, we walk you through why you want it better and where you want to go. And then that's when we can determine if my program's a good fit or not. And is the consultation free? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. So if somebody out there, you know, wanted to learn more, how would they go about contacting you? Uh, probably the best way right now is to just go to my website, makeinspiredchoices.com. I'm just getting that updated. I want to have it nice and user-friendly, give a little bit of, about what I'm teaching and what's going on. Um, and then you can contact me through email there. We can set up a free consultation just to talk. Because like I said, my job is to help people grow and become better people so they can live better lives. And I would love to just talk. You know, I just love talking about this stuff, Alicia, once you get into it. And you start getting a passion for it. I just want to talk to people and try to motivate them to, to take that step to do something, whether it happens to be with me or they have to maybe take another road. But just going that way, you know, really helps people start seeing that there is better out there. I love your passion. When I ask you a question, the way you approach it, just the passion behind your voice, you can definitely hear it and how much you care about helping other people and making sure it's a really good fit. Yeah, thank you. Well, Matthew, this was an incredible interview, uh, great information, love your passion, love your energy. I just really want to thank you for taking the time out to, you know, talk to us and, and kind of educate us a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on. Like I said, this is something I love to talk to people about. And uh, I think when everyone starts chasing their dreams, we're going to see much better communities and a much better world when, when everyone does that. I hope so. I definitely do. All right, guys. Well, you guys just heard from Matthew Hale. His contact information will be here down in the show notes. This is your host, Alicia DeBrell from Insight Media. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.